September, it's a good time to start using swim baits. Now people say, how do you know? So I mark it on a calendar. Once I, I get into September up in the North Woods, I should start using uh, swim baits. No, but I'm going to tell you what usually happens about that time of year. It could be prolonged a week or two. Even though we haven't had any major cold fronts, the last week I can notice progressively drop in the water temperature overnight. Nothing drastic, but you take that in about a week's time, all of a sudden I've got water temperatures now that dropped about 10 degrees. Why have they dropped so much? The nights are getting cooler. Daytime it goes up to the 80s, but we're getting them cool nights. The other morning I had 44 degrees. Well, that's going to drop water temperatures, particularly in stained water rivers or if you're fishing a stained water lake or reservoir on a clear water, that water temperature isn't going to drop quite so drastically. So the swim bite might not turn in, you know, till a little bit later. But generally, you get in rivers and you get in the reservoirs up north, you start getting the early September, and that's my signal. It isn't the calendar, it's the water temperature drop. Whenever you get a water temperature drop about 7, 8, 10 degrees in the fall, and that could be from 75 down to 65, that's huge, and that triggers the swim bait bite. Let's talk a little bit about what I'm using here. It's a case, little magic swim, fantastic. It's a three, three quarter inch bait. It's just deadly on smallmouth. Some guys like to use larger ones. You know, if you're fishing in the Great Lakes where you've got a lot of seven or eight pound fish potential, that's different. But when you're in most natural lakes and rivers in the northern part of the country, you're best with a little bit smaller swim bait. In fact, if I got a cold front situation where it really gets turned off fish, I'll go to an even tinier bait. Type of line I use, I use a lot of copolymer line. Some guys will use fluorocarbon with uh, swim baits, but either line's a good choice. It's a personal opinion. I like the copolymer. It seems to hold up real well. It's easy to use. It doesn't create any obstacles on the reel. Especially if uh, I give a casting rod to a customer, which I usually don't. They usually uh, use spinning rods. And even on a spinning rod, it just works fantastic. They're pretty abrasive resistant. The trick with the swim baits, I've talked about it in the, sp in the spring. Well, let's go over it a little bit. And it's a problem that I have with a lot of my customers. They're fishing with me, and I explain with the swim bait. I give them a course before they even cast one. I says, watch me what I'm doing. You cast that swim bait out. Let it sink a little bit. If you want to get it down a little bit or the desired uh, depth that you're fishing, but as that you use that steady retrieve, and you feel that bump from the smallmouth, don't get crazy. We're not using a spinner bait or something. I mean, you've got to let that fish, you got to keep reeling a little bit, let that fish grab that swim bait. They'll grab it, roll it up in their mouth ever so slowly. Sometimes it's faster. And you got to just wait for any change in a direction. It could be up or down or right or left. It doesn't matter. When you got that retrieve and you feel that bump and that smallmouth crunching up that swim bait in its mouth and it just changes the direction make sure your line is tight and set the hook and don't set like you're trying to pull a tree out of you know deroot a tree just a good powerful stick set and then steady retrieve it back deadly baits in the fall from the early fall like this all the way to ice up swim baits and my favorite it's hard to beat the Little Magic Swims by Case Plastic. A few tips when you're fishing swim baits for smallmouth bass. And I, when I say smallmouth bass, because I'm going to be honest with you, I don't catch largemouth bass with swim baits because I never fish for largemouth bass. I catch them occasionally on some of the waters I have. So most of my experience with swim baits comes exclusively for smallmouth bass in rivers, reservoirs, and natural lakes. With that in mind, I hardly ever rig a swim bait any other way than with a jig head. One tip about the jig heads, first of all, you have to have a variety of eighth ounce, quarter ounce, three eighths ounce. With those three weights, you could usually cover any situation when you're dealing with smallmouth bass. 
When you purchase swim bait heads, make sure you can find them with the longest possible shank on your jig head. What size do I start out with? I just try to use a little bit of common sense and match my water depth with my jig head. That said, you don't know if the fish are going to be up high in the water column, halfway down, or tight to the bottom. So be prepared to occasionally, it, here's a good thing to have a couple of rods, one with like an eighth ounce and maybe one with a quarter ounce or three eighth ounce head, and kind of alternate until you find the level the smallmouth are going to be. The problem is, you don't know on any given day, some days you can run that swim bait over the top of smallmouth and they just come up and hammer it. Two hours later, they're not doing that anymore. you got to get it right down to the desired depth. So it's important, good quality jig heads, and you don't need the real expensive colored painted fancy ones. A lot of them I use are unpainted, but a good quality hook is a must. And experiment with different size heads until you match what's happening, not just on that particular day, but at that particular time. Because believe me, you can be catching them at a certain depth, shuts off like that. You gotta experiment a little bit more.